Yeah, Coach, hope you're having a good day uh, in the snow. And uh, I got one for you right out of the gate on Chris Jackson. I know Mike mentioned that was one of the, one of the plays that kind of gave you a, a boost right out of the gate. What would you like about what he did there? And how much is it kind of play like that set a tone maybe for your group early? Uh, I think it's huge. Um, you know, obviously special teams get to start out every – every half, um, whether it's first or second half. And for Chris to go down there and make a great play there in space, you know, kind of really set the tone for at least us on special teams and got our defense going. Um, you know, it's just an unbelievable play. A guy who wants to go out there and, and do his job and, and do it correctly. And, uh, you know, he was he was ready for anything. And uh, it was just a great way to start the game off. So I'm really proud of him, the way he played, not only on the kickoff team, but on the punt return unit. You know, we ask him to do a lot, whether it's a single or a double press, one of their gunners on the opposite side. You know, we asked him to single up on one of their better gunners, and he did a great job of, you know, really fighting and finishing longer than, than the guy with the ball. So I was really pleased with him. Uh, Terry? All right, there we go. Uh, Craig, Chester Rogers seems to have had uh, – a couple of longer runs. Uh, I think maybe one of them might have gotten called back or something a week or two ago, but he seems to have uh, had some bigger runs on the returns uh, in, in recent games. Uh, what do you, do you attribute that more to the blocking or to uh, his reading the play better? Or what do you, what do you, how does that measure up? Yeah, I, I think it's a little bit of both. Um, you know, Chester's done a good job you know, all year long for us. And, you know, he got the big run there in, in Pittsburgh and he continues to do a really good job of just going and catching the ball and getting vertical. Uh, and along with that, I think our guys are doing a really good job of blocking for him. You know, they know Chester is going to be aggressive back there. He's going to come up and catch all the punts and, and try to run and obviously get a first down for us. But, uh, you know, we still think, you know, watching over the film from last week, uh, that we can still get more yards. So I think our players are excited um, that they got a guy back there that will go up and catch the ball and, and will fight for every inch. So, you know, we're looking to continue to improve on that, but we're happy with what Chester's doing right now. Uh, Teron? Yeah, Coach, when you look at just the, the complementary football formula, you know, that field position is so critical. And you have Brett Kern who, has so many uh, punts, you know, pinning them inside the five yard line. Can you just kind of like take me through the art of, of being able to do that consistently? Yeah, you know, with Brett, obviously he's done it for a very long time and it obviously starts with him practicing it and doing a lot of good things. But, you know, he's always known to do a really good job in plus 50 type punts. You know, when we get close to midfield, of, you know, we usually try to tell him, hey, you know, we don't need to get the ball at the one yard line all the time. We just need you to go and play pitch and catch with the returner. And if it ends up going a little bit deeper, we're going to have gunners that are going to go down there and help him make the play like Nick Westbrook did this past week. Um, but it really helps out with playing complimentary football like you're talking about. A guy who goes down there, kicks the ball inside the five-yard line, you know, and now defensively, um, you know, they're backed up and our defense can go out there and hopefully stop them. And then we can play the field position game. Uh, which we kind of did early in the first quarter where we end up taking the wind, uh, knowing that it'll be tough for a team to punt the ball into that win that was last week. So, you know, anytime we can play complimentary football, we're doing our job as a special teams unit, and we'll hopefully continue to do that this week. Uh, David Bocar. Greg, as many guys as have come in and out of the lineup for you this year, when have you been able to sort of keep guys in the same roles, like in the coverage units, or is there an example or two of a guy who, who was doing one thing earlier in the year and, and doing something different here later, and how difficult is that? Yeah, I, I think it's tough because, you know, as a player, you want to get in rhythm, you know, with certain jobs that, that you want to do. Um, and, it, and it is tough for those guys to go in and out, but they're professionals and they handle it well. And we might ask a guy to move at a certain position. You know, Nick Westbrook was playing really early on for us, and now he's got a bigger role on offense. So we got to bring another guy in for him. You know, we've asked Racy McMass since he's came back to do a bunch of different things on the kickoff unit, whether it's playing on the interior, the four or five spot, to now playing a two spot. And, you know, we're going to be able to move him around a lot. So, uh, I think they do a good job just understanding that we move guys around to help them, um, you know, because that's I learned that early on, you know, good coaching is taking a player, 
where he's not capable of taking himself and being able to move him around and do a bunch of different things. So uh, we always want to put those guys in the best positions for them to succeed. And I think they're all doing a good job right now. Uh, Gentry. Yeah, Craig, are, are you guys having any issues today with the weather in terms of getting everybody to the facility and everybody driving in, or has it been okay there? I, as far as I know, it's been okay. I mean, I grew up in Ohio, so I'm used to this. So six inches, five inches, it doesn't really matter to me. Um, but I think our players just understand that, you know, we knew there was going to be bad weather coming in and, you know, they got to set the time in order for them to get in. But uh, as far as I know, we're, we're, we're good to go. Uh, last one, Jim. Hey, Craig, correct me if I'm wrong here, but I don't think Ryan Izzo has played a lot on special teams. I don't know that necessarily means he can't do it, but how do you know um, whether a guy's capable of doing certain things? And if you got a guy that comes in, joins the club, do you immediately try to audition him there? Or, or how does that process work um, when you don't have a lot of tape on a guy playing teams? Yeah, I think the first thing that we do is we bring him in and we just start talking to him about what positions that he end up playing on special teams. Um, you know, he was at Seattle. So, I, you know, I have a relationship with the coordinator there um, where we're friends. So, you know, you might do some background, call the special teams coordinator at other places, you know, seeing where this guy best fits and then just talking to the player and see what he's comfortable with. And then obviously getting him in, getting him on the board, you know, start talking to him about different fundamentals and techniques that we're going to use um, and then try to get him in as much in practice as we can. And even after practice of working with him a few minutes here and there and just decide, you know, what he's best at, you know, what he's capable of doing. Um, you know, that's how we end up going about anybody that we bring in new.